Welcome back to the Roby RoboSpot Remote Follow Spot System. Today we're going to talk about integrating console control. Now we know RoboSpot can function as a standalone controller, but its ability to assign different levels of control from the console really sets it apart. The streaming control input on the back of the base station allows you to feed ArtNet, Streaming ACN, or MANet, and the RoboSpot functions like a node, piggybacks some of its own DMX and RDM information, and sends it out via the 5-pin DMX output. Let's go over the settings on the RoboSpot. First, let's go to the small touchscreen on the control panel. First, let's go to settings, then Ethernet settings, and let's choose the protocol. In this case, we're going to use MA2Net. So let's choose that one and press the check mark to confirm. Now let's go to the IP address settings. If you're using ArtNet, you can use the default, which can be a 2 dot or 10 dot range. But if you're using MANet, we need to go to the custom IP address and make sure we're in a 192 range. Now let's confirm our MANet universe, which in this case is 1, and the net mass should already be a 255. We're only using one session today, so our session ID can stay at 1. Now that's it for the base station settings. Let's go over to the console and confirm our network settings there. First, let's go to settings, then network configuration and confirm our IP address is in the 192 range. And we've already patched our T1 to universe one. Now let's try a similar setup using ArtNet on the hog four this time. Back at the robo spot, let's go to settings, then ethernet settings, Ethernet mode, and choose ArtNet. Now let's go to the IP address and select the default address, which should be in the two dot range. Now let's hit the check mark to confirm, and now let's set our ArtNet universe. Now keep in mind that ArtNet treats the first universe as zero, so you'll have to offset your universe by negative one relative to your patch. When you're using streaming ACN, you don't have an offset, but you will have to set your priority. Now to change the level of control between the console and the RoboSpot, you'll need to go into the control channel on your console's fixture profile. There you should see three modes, fully enabled, partially enabled, which is just the faders and handles, but anything mapped to the encoder wheels is ignored. And finally, fully disabled. Having this on the control channel allows you to enable and disable fixtures individually and lets you write those values into your queues or assign them to toggle buttons so you can do it on the fly. Remember that the console always sets the high intensity value but the RoboSpot controls the low value, so you'll need to have your intensity fader up on the RoboSpot to see any output from the fixture when your console is in line. If you still have any questions, send an email to info at robylighting.com and we'll make sure you get in touch with someone to help you. Keep an eye out for the next RoboSpot training video, and thanks for watching.